All right. So I'm not going to be doing much of the commentary for this run. Chops is going to be doing a lot of it because it's actually very difficult to talk and concentrate on this game at the same time. That might sound weird, but yeah. it's true. Can't confirm. All right. So three, two, one, go. All right. So this is, this is the third numbered Elder Scrolls. It is Morrowind. Uh, we start out as a prisoner on a ship, as most of the Elder Scrolls are. Uh, we're going to start off with the hardest trick in the game, which is getting around this guard. It's like actually way harder than it should be. Oh, uh, no, oh well. So this, the first couple of minutes are going to be really kind of slow and easy going. It's just some character creation. But after that, the run's going to get extremely hectic and really hard to follow. And we're, I'm just going to try my best to let you know what's happening, but we'll just kind of go with it. So Khajiit won the donation incentive. The normal fastest race is Red Guard because they have Adrenaline Rush, which just speeds up the first little bit and makes one trick a little bit easier. But you can do the run with any of the races. So you'll notice that Albino is kind of moving his mouse around in weird positions. This actually manipulates where the cursor is going to be for all the menus. So the mouse is already like closer or, or over all the buttons that he already needs to hit. And he picked the agent class right there because uh, mainly because it has mercantile, which we're going to use for a little bit of leveling that we have to do. And he also picks the steed, which just gives a little bit more uh, speed. And the first really, really silly trick that you're going to do is um, we're going to take this platter and then drop it on the ground before the guard takes it from us. And then he just kind of forgets about it, so you can just pick it up again and leave. And that's going to fund our initial journey. So right here he picks up a ring, which he's going to use in a second. And talking to this first NPC basically gives you the first main quest, and it also enables saving, which is pretty important for a marathon run. So you give the ring to this guy, and he gives, he's really happy, so he gives you a discount in the shop that's right beside us. Also, Khajiit is really slow, man. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Less than $1,000 to go on that Oblivion run. Nice. All right, so here's the very first shopping thing. We're going to sell off the plate that we got by two Almsumi Intervention Scrolls, a lockpick, and a scroll that unlocks doors because the lockpick is not really going to be used for lockpicking, but don't worry about it for now. The, uh, the scroll that we got, the Alm Sylvie Intervention, there's two intervention scrolls we'll be using. Alm Sylvie goes to the closest uh, temple, I think. Yeah, temple. And uh, uh, Divine Intervention goes to the closest shrine. Imperial uh, Cult Shrine. Imperial Cult Shrine. Uh, we'll be using a lot of uh, Alm Sylvies and a few Divine Interventions here and there. And we're going to meet a very colorful character that is kind of popular in this series. He uh, unfortunately flew too close to the sun. Can I, he, can I interrupt with a quick announcement? Go for it. We have met the Oblivion Donation Incentive. Nice. <laughs> Thank you everybody for your donations. I'm really happy that we're actually able to do an entire Elder Scrolls anthology, which is something we, we set out to do for this marathon and now it's happening. So uh, here we're buying a whole bunch of mark and recall potions, which basically let you mark a position and recall to it. Basically, like teleports you can do. And he's he strategically positioned his menus to make it easier to get the potions quickly. Yeah, they're basically new game plus menus. Don't worry, it's not cheating. So these are the scrolls that we picked off of the guy who fell from the sky. They're uh, they increase your acrobatics by a, a ton and let you just fly across the entire thing. Oh, where are you? Huh. Where am I? That was very so good. this is the problem with doing the run as a sheet. Uh, normally when you have the, uh, the red guard and you have adrenaline rush, it's, uh, you land basically exactly where you want to go. With the lower speed of the Khajiit, it's a little bit confusing. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's doable, but uh, you just need a little bit extra setup for this. This is actually really difficult now. Really difficult now. If I was doing Red Guard, this would be easy, but I'm not used to Khajiit. Clearly, he was wrong. Yet I'd Clearly, he was wrong. <laughs> oh, boy. So you can see that in the top right, the map, he's just kind of like flying across the entire island uh, super quickly. He wants to land... Oh, you're not even getting... I don't. Okay, I know what you're the not getting is. past the ghost fence. I know what the problem is. Are you, are you My stamina is too low. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, so <laughs> Khajiit only has, like, a 160 stamina, and 
regen sh slowly. So this setup is, is pretty particular. Now we should be going much faster. Yeah, that looks better. All right, so up there. Yeah, is, uh, that was it. This place is familiar. Odrasol, I think. Yep. And uh, inside of it is a weapon that you're supposed to be getting at the very end of the game, but we're going to be getting it right now because it's very useful. Also, don't die. <laughs> I'm trying. Normally, as Redguard, you land literally right in front of the door, so you have to do kind of a double jump setup with uh, other races. But in here, he's going to use the scroll to unlock a door that leads right to the weapon, so you don't have to go through the whole thing. And he's going to pick up uh, one or two weapons here, and then he's going to pick up Keening, which is an endgame weapon. Uh, basically, Keening has an effect, well, a bunch of effects, constant effects that buff your speed and health and a bunch of other stats. It turns out if you equip it and then immediately unequip it, the effect just stays on. So you can just mash scroll reel, switch through all your weapons, and now you can see he has like over 6,000 speed. <laughs> so we're fast now. Uh, the rest of the game is going to be going really, really quickly. Uh, now he's going to go over and he charges back an attack, switch to lockpick, and it just insta-kills an enemy because the lockpick has no actual damage, so it just kind of does max damage. And... <laughs> Now he's picked up Sunder, which is the other uh, end game weapon that you need. It, it buffs like attack, luck, and some other things. We're going to need about 3,000 luck to actually do the route. And right now we're just kind of doing something that we'll have to do much later. We're going to go to an uh, ancient burial site and we're going to collect a bow that somebody's going to go tell us to get later on. Uh, partially for the quest and also because it's, it'll be pretty useful for combat. Also, since your character is moving so fast, the animation is pretty fantastic. <laughs> uh, you actually move slower in third person, so whenever you need like small en enclosed areas, uh, you generally do it in third person where you can actually control where the hell you're going. And in when you're traveling far, far distances on the world map, you just go in first person. So here he picks up the bow and uses a recall to go back to the potion shop. Uh, uh. That's rude. Um, mm. That's okay. Anyway, uh, so since we have a ton of luck, we can just kind of get away with literally anything. <laughs> yeah, story isn't running. Oh, no. All right. Hold on. Just a second. It crashed. And it crashed. <laughs> I love this video game. Help Microsoft solve this problem. <laughs> <laughs> please, Microsoft, please solve this. Okay. Yeah. And just for the record, this is definitely not a that has never happened before. This is very common. This happens. Caps lock is on. Yes, it is. Uh, this happens. This happens a lot, <laughs> unfortunately. So uh, just give us a second to fix this, yeah. and we will be right back. This game... Um, your experience varies a lot. Albino seems to have way more crashes than literally anybody else. It hates me. <laughs> That's fine, though. The madman who routed all quests. <laughs> all main quests. All main quests. All main quests, yeah. All well, quests you know. Just silly. Come on. Task managers. Okay. I did save, though, before I did that, because I knew it would crash, probably. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go. This is what I tried to do. What? Why isn't DS already doing anything? That's uh, in the bottom right. It's a, what? Yeah, hit the arrow in the bottom right. What? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay, it turned off for some reason. It turned off my again. My face when PC runs. Okay, All right, we, go. we got there. All right. We did it. So, um, <laughs> So as I was saying, as since we have like a billion luck, uh, we can kind of get away with anything, including just buying potions for literally nothing. So we're going to get a whole bunch of potions of mark and recall because we're going to be making ample use of them throughout the entire run. And uh, one other nice thing is you're, you have like, you, you're really good at talking right now because you have so much luck that you can literally trick the NPC into just giving you a ton of money when you buying something. So you can get a potion, you can also get like a 800 gold. Just 
have them give it to you for free, which is uh, pretty useful. That and the quest rewards are going to be completely funding the journey through Morrowind. And also, <laughs> this menuing is a lot harder than it looks. Morrowind menus are very finicky, and it's uh, pretty difficult to do this quickly. So we're got about everything here. And now here you see total sold, but he's actually buying something. So he's selling a bot potion for hundreds of gold. So, all right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. Okay, um, let me just check this. All right. There we go. All right. Everything's all set up. It's fine. <laughs> I can't tell so. because I can bound it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. How do I... How do I bound attack? <laughs> mm. You can't attack? I can't attack. I unbound attack. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think it's use. Is, is it use? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's use. Okay, now I need to wait for Lava take off so I can sneak. All right, so uh, later on we're going to need some really fancy clothes. So we're just going to take them from this poor person. She didn't need them. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. And uh, <laughs> we're going to make our way back to Sedanin just because we need a couple few items before we get on with actual quests. So over here, we're going to get a spell called Jack of Trades, which we're not actually going to use at all. It's just going to let us make an even better spell, which is going to significantly... Oh, we're not supposed to be out of bounds yet. So when you're going this fast, walls just kind of don't exist yeah. anymore. Uh, you can just kind of go through literally anything. So this is uh, the first quest tells you to go here and pick up the skull. So we're just going to do that now. And uh, we're going to go meet up with Caius, who is... Uh, head of the blades in this region and he's just going to give us a whole bunch of quests that we're going to do and uh, so now we need to do our horrible section of level grinding um, it's it's not too bad uh, we're already half done and uh, there we go all right so that's level three that's all we actually need to do to complete the main quest so we can just move on and we just need to go in here and get a Dormer puzzle box, which uh, is requested by, well, will be requested of us by somebody in a second. <laughs> and first off, we're going to go to the, the Fighters Guild and take a few of their supplies that they're definitely not going to need. Don't worry about it. Since we have a ton of luck, we can just steal stuff for free. And uh, talking to this guy, we'll give him the, the puzzle box and move on with the quest. And next up is the Mages Guild. Once again, they have some supplies that we need. We, we're going to save the world. We need them more than them. So she's going to sell some scrolls. And turns out if you kill her, she also has more scrolls on her that we still need. Sorry. Saving the world, etc. <laughs> and uh, The good of all. Yeah, the greater good. It's fine. Some more scrolls. And now we're going to first advance the quest with this guy. And we're going to make a spell that's going to be very, very, very useful for uh, escort quests later on. It's so, going to be... Yeah, so this spell... It's been known... It's, if you look on, like, GameFAQs or, like, CheatCodes.com or whatever, this is called the Soul Trap glitch, despite having nothing to do with Soul Trap. <laughs> so, basically, you can stack spell effects onto your character permanently, and... I wanted to find a way to have this effect transfer onto NPCs for the escort quests. And if you make a similar spell as an area effect spell and hit an NPC with the area effect, not the actual spell itself, but the area effect, you can permanently add status effects to them. Fortify speed being the best one. And that's why you need Jack of Trades, because it gives you the fortify skill spell effect. Yeah, we're actually going to see it in action right here. Um, we get sent off to Vivek to go meet with three informants. This is the first one. He basically has a bunch of guys bullying him because he's a uh, Argonian, and uh, we just tell them not to bully because bullying is wrong. And uh, we're we're using the spell on him right here, and now he's going to waddle behind us just as fast as we waddle. <laughs> here he comes. 
Uh, so he tells us about... <laughs> We're basically here to learn about three things. The first one is the Nerevarine cult, which we just learned about there. Second thing is the Sixth House, which we're going to learn uh, from the next NPC. And then we're also going to learn about the prophecies. Um, this guy, the next informant is going to ask us to deal with that guy, so he's been dealt with. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of dealing with in this run. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so that informant has been talked to. Next one, we just need to talk to one of the librarians, and she's going to go tell us to collect a book. And, you know, you're not actually able to take it out of the library, but we have a lot of luck, so we can just kind of take it right in front of the guards, and they don't notice. And with that, we're done with uh, Vivek, and he's going to go tell us to uh, talk with somebody who used to live among the Ashlanders, which are the, like, the tribal dark elves that live out on Vardenfell. Uh, we're going to go talk with one who is now a merchant inside of one of the main cities. So we're just going to go over and talk with him and nice up with him. He basically he tells us uh, about the gift giving customs, but we don't actually have a gift, but he thinks that's good enough. So just our the thought of us giving a gift was a gift for him or something. The, their culture's weird. And now we're going to actually go out and meet with the first Ashlander tribe, which is uh, Urshalaku, yep. I think. And they... Where would you like we need to actually, you know, make them like us because we're just some random outlander in there. They're pretty racist in this place. A dirty Khajiit, nonetheless. Yeah. But... We just kind of smooth talk them, and uh, I think this one tells you you'll get the bow. Yes. Yeah, this one goes to tell you tell you to get the bow that we got at the very start, but we already have it. So he's like, "Great, you're awesome." And uh, this person tells us that we need to go pass a test um, by going and visiting the cavern of the, of the incarnate, which are basically people who tried to fulfill prophecies that we're going to go fulfill. And they failed, and they now reside inside of this uh, cavern. And uh, so we can just kind of fly over here. We need to get here at like 6 a.m. or 6 p.m. for the door to be open. And we kind of learn more about our actual, like, the prophecies and how we can fulfill them and everything. And most importantly, this person gives us some very swag pants that we're going to be using. These pants are pretty fabulous. And they let us fly. They're pretty fly. Yep. <laughs> and here, uh, we're going to be doing this a lot, kind of clipping out of bounds and then shooting someone. Uh, that was actually a vampire, so pretty evil person that's taken residence there. And this next tribe is going to go tell us to take care of the vampire, which we already have, which is convenient. All right. There you go. And he tells you to go talk to the wise woman. And she's going to be like, well, you know, he asked for like a high-ranking Telvanni bride, but you can also just like pick up a slave, dress her up, and then just pretend that it's a high-ranking Telvanni bride. He won't notice the difference. It's great. And uh, these things are Telvanni houses. They need to be politics because they, they won't support us. We need to convince them to actually support us in our uh, fulfillment of the prophecies. So you'll be seeing us uh, debate them very intimately and make sure that they truly understand our side in the ground while, while we're, uh, we're becoming Hortator and Nerevering. Killing off the Tolvani is actually an intended way to complete the quest. Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 It's, fine. it's fine. It's fine. Bad <laughs> things can happen with voiding out. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so uh, basically our main objectives here is passing the prophecy or fulfilling the prophecies by passing a bunch of trials the main one is becoming a uh, Nerevarine of all of the Ashlander tribes and Hortator of all the great houses so this is another Ashlander tribe for this one they need to find a safe place for them to live so they tell us to go up north to uh, I can't remember some ruins of something and uh, actually make sure that it's safe for them to live so we just immediately say, yeah, don't worry, I've already cleared it out, it's totally safe. You can, you can totally come over here. 
So sh we need to escort her there, which means uh, water walking across this lake. This is luckily, this is one of the easier uh, escort quests because she, she's generally pretty good at following you because it's just kind of a straight line across the water. She hey, also for me. conveniently has a permanent water walking effect on her already. Yep. Yeah, the water walking is only for us. So as you can see, this is a totally safe place. There's not demons and stuff everywhere. Yep. Oh, there she is. I'm fine. Hope she followed. She did. Yeah, she's here. They actually have to be within a certain distance when you go through a, a doorway for them to actually follow you. So even though there's like a bunch of enemies everywhere, she says, oh yeah, there's the statue. This must be a safe place. Good job. You made it safe for us. So now that we've passed that thing, we can become uh, basically an honorary member of their tribe, and they can name us Nerebrine. So we're going to move on from that and actually go do uh, work on becoming a hortator of the Ritterin tribe, or the Ritterin uh, Great House. So obviously, the first step in political, you know, the usual pol political step is to. Uh, break into this place and rescue somebody that they've kidnapped. Seems, it's pretty standard politics, you know, the usual stuff. This is basically, one of the councilmen is kind of a real jerk, and he's kidnapped the son of another one. So we're going to rescue him to make all of the other councilors love us. So this is just going to be basically, once we rescue him, the majority of the councilors are going to love us. We're basically just going to go walk up to them one by one and just saying... Make me Hortador, and they'll be like, yeah, I love you, and then just move on to the next one. So we can do a That's quick you. donation or two for this. Thank you. We have a $5 donation from Zachary Gottlieb, donating again to hear Albino Albatross's best dark elf impression. Uh, was that it? <laughs> no, no, it was not it. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> I don't just, just throw a switch or something in there. You sweat. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have a one hundred dollar donation from Oliver Owens. I was very excited to see a Bethesda block on this year's SGDQ. So excited I had to donate. So here is one hundred dollars. Put it towards the Oblivion run. I've got better things to do, so if you don't mind. All right. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> She's got better things, better, better leave. <laughs> all right, so we basically, uh, we've gotten all of the counselors except for the last one to uh, agree to make us Hortador, but this guy that we rescued the son from is really mean and he hates us, so we tell him to just fight us IRL in the arena and we'll settle it man to man. So he's going to be waiting for us in the arena, and we'll deal with him later. And you always fall off that lick, <laughs> man. I just go straight, and it knocks me off. <laughs> so we're going to quickly go back to Caius. He's going to give us a mission to go to the Sixth House base, which is like the evil cult that worships the uh, evil god dagoth -er. So we're going to fly off here. I thought I was going to crash for a second. It's fine. Don't worry about it. No crashing. And here's the base. Save. <laughs> so this is actually a really confusing place uh, to learn, even though it's just you go like right, left, right, or something like that. But there's a whole bunch of different exits and stuff that you can go to. But uh, you basically move on towards the end to the leader of this place, and we're going to, you know, make sure he's dealt with. Did you get him? Nice, nice snipe. And basically, with his dying breath, he curses you with uh, the divine disease, corpus something or other. And uh, we're going to have to get that cured because that's part of the prophecies that you're immune to disease. But next up, we're going to go to another one of the uh, Ashlander tribes. And these ones are very friendly. And they just, you know, they just want to be friends. So we just need to greet them with our secret, secret friend handshake that we use a, a spear for. It's fine. <laughs> they've got weird customs. All right. So they've all, 
all the friendly ones have been pacified. They are now our friends, so we can go and. Uh, so those were, those were the, uh, the the war loving tribe members, and this tribe is split between war loving and peace loving ones. So we take care of all the war loving ones, and then we tell this guy to actually uh, take control of the tribe and name us Nerevarine. So now there's only peaceful ones left. There we go. And we need to actually deal with the disease that we've been uh, cursed with, I guess. And to do so, this guy has basically been trying to treat this disease with, you know, no success so far. It's been killing off everybody that's uh, been infected with it. So he tells us to go down and actually, like, visit the people who are inflicted with it just to, like, see your fate, basically. And you actually get to meet the last dwarf that's in existence, which is this friendly guy over here. There he is. That's our fate, I guess. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay. That's interesting. It's fine. It's fine. I have, like, instant loading or something. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a second. That's not... It is not fine. Is it? No, it's not fine. All right. We just need to figure out where we are for a second. Here it is. All right. We got there. <laughs> Fresh. So now that we've looked at... Uh, the different people inflicted with this disease. He's just going to give us a potion. He's just like, you're probably going to die, but you got nothing better to do, so let's do it. And of course it works, because you're the hero that fills all the prophecies. Plot armor. Good old plot armor. You can't possibly lose. And now we're going to do another quick stuff of politics for more Telvanni counselors. They need to see the way. All right, they're convinced. <laughs> Good work. <laughs> and this is the last one we're going to do. Uh, this one, you actually cannot convince anyway, so killing him is the intended way. So this one, we're actually going to kill in bounds just because it's intended. For all the other ones, we were killing them out of bounds because nobody can see you when you're out of bounds. So they just had accidents. Whoopsie. <laughs> and uh, now we're going to go get the high-ranking Telvani bride that one person asked us for. AKA, we're going to go here and buy a slave and pretty her up and escort her to the tribe. And this is probably my least favorite part of the run because this AI is eight out of eight for sure. I want to taunt you right now, but I feel like she's going to mess with <laughs> me if I do. I dare you. Just try it every this, time you say something. This quest is not hard. <laughs> So we're going to be casting our amazing ASD spell a whole number of times to make her go fast. And we just need to escort her back to the tribe so you can do a couple donations while Albino struggles with this. Look. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have a $200 donation from BW Izu. Thank you guys for absolutely destroying my sleep schedule with this block. Have 10 cents for every hour I spent on a Bethesda game. We have a $100 donation from Star Foxy is Too Cute. I'm only here to make someone blush. P.S. Brown orcs are the best orcs. We have $50 from Scott Capricorn. All Elder Scrolls games hype! Hype. Hype. We have a $50 donation from Trey ZH. Oblivion? In five minutes? I want to see that. I certainly agree with you, Trey ZH. All right, we did it. She followed. She didn't get lost. Good job. Why? Why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hooray, AI. See, it's not hard. <laughs> it's really hard, man. All right, so now we're going to go to the last surviving Telvani counselor who may or may not be completely and utterly insane. Don't worry about it. That's not our problem. Um, <laughs> we're just going to go ask her to make her or to make us Hortador, and she'll be like, she'll say some crazy person things, but it's fine. We did it. It's the last. She's the last one, so she gets to make the decision. 
Yeah, she's old. Leave her alone. <laughs> we make us. And we're going to make one last stop to Caius, who is going to give us uh, his final orders before he disappears forever. We make a special drink. And now, remember that guy that threatened to fight us IRL because we rescued the guy off of him? Well, Here now let's do it. Role. Epic fight. All right, he's, he's done. <laughs> Good fight. Well done. <laughs> And now we're going to uh, more start working decision. on, yeah, more, more, or more politics, more convincing people to side us, side with us. Good job. <laughs> and this is the the last house that we need, which is Halalu, and uh, one of them is hiding in this like random haunted mansion. So we're just going to go in and convince them, like actually convince them this time. I swear, just talk to them. And uh, one of the, the last orders that Caius gave us is to rescue the person who gave us the book in Vivek at the start. So since we have a ton of luck, we can just lockpick literally everything. So we're actually using the lockpick to lockpick things, which is amazing, I know. And we just waltz in here, we give her a divine intervention, and she can just teleport away. And she also tells us how to get to uh, a monastery, which, will, which house the, uh, the lost prophecies that we're trying to fulfill. So we can just go over to this NPC and she will take us over. <laughs> and it's only open during a certain point in the day, so you have to use some weights there. But over here, get to talk to our friendly scholars, which will give us the lost prophecies that we're interested in. And now we just kind of need to clean up a few things before we can actually finish the game. So we just need to make sure that we're actually uh, named Hortador of all the great houses. So first of all, we're going back to Aldrun because we just we fought the guy IRL, so we can finally just uh, be named Hortador of Redoran, which was which is just up here. We get a whole bunch of journal updates because we've already done all the uh, requirements for it. And next up, uh, there's a gangster up here in a pla plantation who has like kind of an iron grip of, over the politicians in the area, so we just need to make sure he you know, backs off and lets us do our own thing. So we're going to convince him. All right, he's convinced. <laughs> he shouldn't be a problem anymore. He, he, he understands how we're trying to save the world, and it's really important that you know we get what we need so since he's taken care of these people will just like immediately name us Hortator which is great there's just one more I think yes oh. so this is the last one at this point we should be named uh, Nervarine of all the major uh, Ashlander cults and well, tribes. And we should be uh, Hortador of all but one, which we'll just finish right now. There's basically one counselor left. Uh, all he wants from you is just a little kiss, and he'll name you Hortador, so. Oh, wait. Oh, he didn't. Uh, yeah, stall for time. Stall for time? Oh, my God. <laughs> all right, uh, just give him a kiss. Give him a little kiss, and he's like, all right, great. I'll back you. That's all he wants. So if all, all goes right, there we go. We can meet, yep. meet the Arch Cannon, which means we've fulfilled all of the, uh, the prophecies before. We've done all of the main quests. All we need to do is meet with the god Vivek, who will give us our end game quest. And uh, you know, how much of a god can he really be? You think, you think if he's a god, he can just withstand a little attack, right? Yeah, I think so. You maybe. should try that out. Maybe. I need to make sure I'm supporting the right people here. So let's see if he'll, he'll survive this. Yeah, you just poke him with a lockpick. Oh. Wow. <laughs> oh, the thread of prophecy is severed. Oh, well. Well, that's fine. Uh, basically, he just tells you to go. He gives you an item so you can handle uh, Keening and Sunder because we obviously wouldn't be able to <laughs> before. And he tells us to go get those two things, and then we can go take out Dagoth Ur, who is the final boss here. But... We don't, we don't really need him. We've clearly done everything fine on our own. Oh, and crank of shame. 
Wow. The crank of shame. Oh. Terrible. You can clip through the thing that blocks the door, but apparently it's not working today. Too high. <laughs> that feel went too fast. So we're basically at the end of the game. We've done all the main quests. We've gotten all the required items, which we got actually at the very beginning of the game. All that's left is to kill, a, a, I guess, another god. Because we've already dealt with one. So how do you kill a god, caveman? Well, you, uh, you hit a heart with a hammer once, and then you stab it a couple times, and then you die. That makes Time. sense. <laughs> there you go. What was the time? What was the time? What was the time for that? 35.06. Okay. For the crash, I, <laughs> I guess that's fine. Yeah. 